Hello everyone and welcome to the Distinct Mastering YouTube channel. My name is Freddie. Today we're going to be getting into Ableton Live's new features. This is not a comprehensive overview of all of the new features. This is going to be some of my favorite new features. I did an Ableton 12 live stream last week, which was a first look. You can head on over to my live stream tab or I'll leave you a link down below in the description so you can check that out if you're interested. But let's get right into this. Okay, Ableton Live 12 is a game changer. It's a lot different. There's a lot of cool features. Today I'm going to give you some of my top and favorite new features that I personally love. Okay, here we are with just a basic drum and bass line track that I started. It's nothing crazy, but we're going to go over the top Ableton Live 12 features that I found most useful for my workflow. There's obviously a lot more features that you might benefit from, so I highly recommend you scour the Ableton Live 12 release notes and find features that might be beneficial to you. Let's go. Okay, the first feature that I found the most useful is this new browser. The new browser is crazy. You can assign tags to your sounds. So for example, for this sound, I could say it's a loop. I could say it's a snare. And you can add your own tags if you want per thing, per grouping. There's so many things in here. I haven't even got to explore all of them or start tagging all my sounds. It's crazy. I was actually in the process of organizing my sound library by type, but then I found out this was coming in Ableton 12, so I stopped working on that just to see what this was like, and I think I'm just going to start going back and tagging all of my sounds. It might be a great time for all of you to start a fresh sound library, which I recently did, and I've even considered starting a brand new one and adding things and tagging them. A cool tip, what I did last night when I made this little drum beat was I stuck to one sample pack of mine, which is kind of like an active library that I basically throw things in, and this is stuff that I save, and I kind of made this based off sounds in there, so I was tagging and going through things and forcing myself to do that. So there's a fun game for you. You know, the crazy thing is, is once you do have all of that, you can kind of then go to your user library and you can literally filter by whatever you want. So for example, if I click on this sample packs, you're gonna see some of the sounds pop up that I've already tagged. If I click on bass, you're gonna see some of the sounds that I tagged last night. And if I were to kick on kick drums, you're gonna see some of the sounds that I tagged last night. Snare, same thing, and on and on and on. So the more that you actively organize and tag all of your sounds, it's just a way faster way to find you're the sounds you're looking for, and audition everything you might have. So there's other tools that do this. I know Loop Cloud introduced it. I know there's um, XO, which is a cool tool. I own it, but I haven't really explored it. And they have a lot of AI features, which will scan your sounds. So that's pretty cool. And Ableton now has introduced that. So if you take a look and I click on one of these sounds right here and I play these, you'll notice this little show similar files button. Now I can click this and it'll scan my library and find all the similar files. And that's crazy. I mean, game changing right there. This is probably my favorite feature in Ableton Live 12. Definitely explore the new browser features. I think it's super game changing. Okay, one thing I want to point out that, you know, if you're a simpler user, there's a cool feature that is related to the AI similar search results. And if you're a sampler user, you don't have that option. Notice right here, there's nothing there. But if you are using a simpler, if you hover over the sound that you just dropped in, you're going to get these little arrows. And this is going to give you the hot swap sample as well as swap to the next similar sample. So it scans your library, looks for similar samples, and check that out. It's just going through similar claps to the one that I selected. I think that is so crazy. Check these new features out, you're gonna love them. Now, one of the new features you could do is you can control the navigation menus at the top from the keyboard, which you could not do before. So if I roll up to the top and the navigation bar and I click this, I can tab right over and then I can use my arrow drop downs to select. If you hold shift tab, it'll go backwards. There, At first I was kind of like, well, what's the point of that? And I haven't found a way to actually just use the keyboard to get into these menus. I still have to hover with the mouse. But I did realize that they've moved some of the features. Some of the features like the track delay that I like a lot, they're no longer right here on the right side of the corner. So you have to actually go in here 
and view, and then you have to go to the arrangement track controls, and this is where you can find that stuff. So this is kind of a handy way to speed up the workflow, I guess, and that's their answer to that since they moved a lot of stuff into the navigation menu. Wasn't my favorite thing that they moved that stuff. It took me a second to find it. So there you go, top tip for you. If you do find something that's missing from your old Ableton Live 11 view, check the navigation menus at the top. Another cool tip is there's a lot of new key commands for Ableton Live 12, so many that I haven't learned them all yet, but check the Ableton Live reference manual if you'd like to learn more about those. There's a whole bunch, so just another added tip for you in talking about navigating and menus and features and key commands. Okay, some of the new game-changing tips for Ableton Live 12 include the MIDI editor or the piano roll. And one of the things you can do is you could do cool things like splits and chops now. So for example, I'm just going to extend this into longer notes. So if I just hover over one of these and then I just hold E, I'm going to split this wherever I want, which I think is a really cool tip because you can then just randomly split things and get some really unique patterns that way. Another thing you can do is chop and you can chop things evenly based on the grid settings. So for example, if I select all of these and then I am to hold E, Alt, I get this feature, which is chop, and you see I'm chopping the MIDI evenly based on how many divisibles of that number you see right there. So this is crazy, because you can get some crazy patterns. Listen to that. You know, some really interesting stuff here that is never been seen before, in my opinion. Okay, another thing I want to show you with the Ableton stuff is the new MIDI transformation tools, and you can find that here in the clips. You'll see here there's this advanced tools for transforming MIDI notes, and there's different ones. So you have arpeggiate, connect, ornament, quantize, recombine, span, strum, and time warp. You also have these ones for Max for Live. I'm not going to get into the weeds on this stuff. I haven't even explored them all. Ableton Live 12 is so new, and it's really my third time using it. But I wanted to give you some of the new cool tips that I found were some of the features. I did scour the release notes, and I suggest you do the same. Another thing that Ableton Live 12 introduced is these generative tools. And if you look right here, you can see that you can generate new MIDI clips by different things. Rhythm generates rhythmic patterns, which can be really cool for drums and percussion. Seed will randomly generate notes using adjustable pitch duration and velocity changes, which is pretty crazy. Shape will generate sequences of notes with varying pitches based on drawing shapes. For example, if I generate this, I'm gonna get like a step ladder. If I go back down to, I'm sorry, let's take this and drop this to down, now I get a step down ladder. So really, really, really crazy stuff. And then stacks is really to generate chords. So you could see here that you could generate some really, really interesting patterns, stuff that you'd probably never come up with on your own. I highly recommend you go in and explore this. Some of the other new Ableton features are UI improvements. They've moved some things around, like I mentioned earlier. If you don't see something, you might want to check the top menu. Notice here how they have the notes, envelopes, and then MPE. That used to be over here on the left. And they have this whole new tab setting over here. You'll also notice there's this new latency thing where you can keep monitoring latency in recording. So if you have a lot of latency in your session, you can leave that on or you could shut it off. You're also going to notice there's this new tuning section and you're going to kind of see that they've changed just some of the layout. One of the most game changing things about the UI interface is you can have the devices and the clip view all in one shot by using these down here. And then if you wanted to, in this view on arrangement, you could even look at your mixer. Super cool, super game changing, puts everything in one screen. Same thing flipping over to the mixer side, I could still have the device view and the clip view, and I could turn these on and off as needed if I just want to look at my mixer. Another cool thing about the mixer is they've really extended how high these can go. And if you notice, they moved the little arrow onto the left, and they've kind of put these little curves onto the meters, and apparently these meter ballistics are a lot better than before. So that's another little cool tip for you. Everything else pretty much looked the same for me on the mixer view. I didn't notice anything really different there. If you do see something different that I missed, shoot me a comment down below, I'd love to know. Another cool thing that I did wanna mention, which I didn't catch this in my live stream, but you can now reverse MIDI clips. Before you could only reverse audio, 
check this out. I'm gonna take this snare right here and we're just gonna hit the R button and it's now been reversed. Let's mute this one. That's what it sounded like. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna be playing with that for sure. Reversing MIDI clips is something I've never seen ever in my life. Another cool thing that I want to mention is you can go back to your browser histories. So as you saw, I was additioning a bunch of sounds. Maybe you found something that you liked, but you want to go back and find it. There's these little arrows here, and you can just go and browse back to everything that you did. So that is so game-changing. Can't believe they did that. It's like an extension to your undo, but just for searching for sounds. So cool. Now, this was just supposed to be a quick video on some of my favorite new tools in Ableton Live 12. There's a ton of new features in some of the Ableton devices, which I haven't even got to explore yet, including the Arpeggiator, the LFO tool, and other various devices. So I do need to get into that. If you want to see a video on that stuff, shoot me a comment down below and let me know you're interested, and I will dive deep and give you something. But I hope you found this video useful. If you haven't upgraded to Ableton Live 12, I highly suggest you do it. And if you did find this content useful, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and that bell notification will keep you up to date. My name is Freddy from Distinct Mastering, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.